All of these calculus textbooks make the same claim that the indefinite integral of 1 over x is the logarithm of absolute value of x plus c. Now, this formula is close to being true, and it's certainly true if I take it the other way around. Like, the derivative of logarithm of absolute value of x plus c is certainly 1 over x. I've shown that just in my calculus course, for example. Uh, you can check out the links to that if you're so interested. But it's not completely true because there are other functions, other antiderivatives of 1 over x that cannot be written in this form. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. My thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video, more about them at the end. To understand this, let's first turn to the graph of logarithm and answer why is that an antiderivative of 1 over x in the first place. Now, the derivative of a function is the same thing as the slope of its tangent line. So if I put some point on logarithm and I think about what is the tangent line at that point, as I move the point around I get all of these different values for the slope. So my claim here is that the derivative of logarithm is 1 over x, so let's plot 1 over x, and I want to observe that this is really a line. If I take my point far off to the right here, then my tangent line is very close to zero, and the graph of 1 over x is very close to zero as well. But if I take my point and I put it down here, then the value of the slope of logarithm gets very large, as does the graph of 1 over x. So the point is that at least graphically the derivative of logarithm equaling 1 over x sort of makes sense, or said the other way around, an antiderivative of 1 over x is the logarithm. But there's something weird going on here about the domains, which is that for logarithm this is only allowed to have positive values in it. You don't have the logarithm of a negative number. This is equivalent to saying that if you take the base e and you take e to some power, it could just never equal a negative number. So that's why logarithms of negatives are not defined. But 1 over x is defined for negative values. 1 over x is defined for every value except precisely x equal to 0 where it's not defined. So to say that logarithm of x is an antiderivative of 1 over x is kind of weird because logarithm has only half the domain that the original function 1 over x has. So logarithm of x is just not a very satisfying answer to what is an antiderivative of 1 over x. There's a domain problem. So instead of plotting logarithm, I'm going to turn on the function logarithm of absolute value of x. When you put that absolute value of x in, x can still not be equal to zero, that's still going to be this uh, vertical asymptote. But the absolute value just means that any negative value just does exactly what it did on the positive side. And when x is some negative value, the slope is going to be negative as well, and so is 1 over x, so everything aligns. So this is the motivation behind the classic calculus claim that logarithm of absolute value of x it's just a better antiderivative for 1 over x than logarithm without the absolute values, because now at least the domains match. Okay, so that part seems fine, so why am I making this video? Why am I suggesting there's more to the story? Well, well there is one more piece that the textbooks do usually put in. They, they write this plus c. Let me take this graph of logarithm of absolute value of x, and I'm going to add to it an arbitrary constant c. So this is going to be the graph of logarithm of absolute value of x plus c for various different c's that I'm showing. And the point here is that if I put on that point and I put on the tangent line, well, the slope of the tangent line here, that doesn't change. It doesn't matter how much up or down you shift this function, the slope of the tangent line is always exactly the same. And so logarithm of absolute value of x plus any constant is also going to be an antiderivative to 1 over x. So why do I not like this answer? Well, it comes down to what do I mean by an indefinite integral, like the integral of 1 over x dx is some big f of x for the antiderivative plus an arbitrary constant c. A formula like this, the little f of x, the original function, that's just one function. But the right hand side, capital F of x, which just means an antiderivative, whatever antiderivative you choose, plus an arbitrary constant, that is an infinite family of functions, a different function for every value of c. And more broadly speaking, the indefinite integral is defined as the set of all possible antiderivatives to my original function. And so when I say that the logarithm of absolute value of x plus c is not the general antiderivative to 1 over x, what I mean is I can show you some other function that cannot be written as logarithm of absolute value of x plus c, but nevertheless is an antiderivative of f of x. That means if you take its derivative, it will give you f of x. 
So let me show you that function. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, for positive values of x, plot just logarithm of x. And for negative values of x, I'm going to plot logarithm of negative x, which for negative values does the exact same thing as inputting an absolute value. But now what I can do here is I can imagine adding a plus c to just one side or the other. For example, maybe I'll slide up the logarithm, the, the right-hand side a little bit, by maybe a value of plus 1.7. Whereas for the left-hand side, maybe I'll slide it down a little bit, and I'll have, and this gives me logarithm of minus x minus 2.7. That is, I've added a plus c and a plus d, two different values of the constant to two different sides. And now the point is, I can vary each side of these separately. I can move the C around, or I can move the D around. I can do whatever I wish. If I ever choose to put my point and my tangent line on, well, it's going to have the same slope no matter what I do to that right-hand side, to that plus C. So the point here is I have a new candidate for an antiderivative, an antiderivative that cannot be described as the logarithm of absolute value of X plus C. Instead, we have this sort of piecewise defined thing where we have the logarithm of x plus a c when x is positive, and the logarithm of negative x plus d, where c and d are arbitrary constants, when x is negative. And so taking the indefinite integral to represent all possible antiderivatives, this leaves us with the claim that there's more antiderivatives than just the original logarithm of x plus c. We have these new candidates, things like logarithm of x plus c when x is positive, and logarithm of minus x plus d when x is negative, where c and d can be different things, and they can be, in fact, any constant you wish. So now you might be wondering, well, hold on, how do I know that this is all of the answers? How do I know that there are not even more antiderivatives to 1 over x or any other function you might name? Well, the reason we were always comfortable with just an antiderivative plus an arbitrary constant, that plus c you had to write down so many times on your calculus papers, the reason for that was a corollary of the mean value theorem. And it says this, if you have two functions f and g, and their derivatives are equal on some open interval a, b, then the one function is equal to the other function plus an arbitrary constant c. That corollary of the mean value theorem, that didn't apply in our case, and it's because of this open interval part. The theorem said, on an open interval where you have these nice functions, then you get the property that the f and the g differ by at most a constant. But the domain of 1 over x, negative infinity up to 0 and 0 up to infinity, not including the 0 in the middle, that is not an interval. It is two different intervals. On each of the two individual intervals, we saw that the theorem was true. We had these examples like logarithm x plus c or logarithm of minus x plus d. But collectively, since it is not an interval, the theorem does not apply. Okay, fair, I'm being a little bit pedantic here, but the real idea that I want to emphasize is that the notion of an indefinite integral is this entire set, this entire family of other functions. And before you just leap to thinking it's an antiderivative plus c, you have to pay attention to the domain. Now, if you really want to master calculus or many other STEM subjects, then I'd strongly recommend the sponsor of today's video, which is Brilliant. What I love about Brilliant's many different courses are just how interactive they are. Consider this example where I can grab the slider and as I move it along, I see both the way the ball is moving up and down as well as the slope of the tangent line. This just really solidifies in my mind that relationship between derivatives, between tangent lines, and between velocities. And what I really like about this is if I come down here and click the continue button, I'm immediately posed with an opportunity to self-assess. Yes, I am right on the money. This kind of hands-on learning where you're in the driver's seat and having to think about the mathematics and play around with the mathematics, it's just really effective for your learning, and that's why I'm so proud to be sponsored by Brilliant. So go to brilliant.org slash Trevor Bazet, sign up for free, or the first 200 people to use that link are going to get an extra 20% off an annual premium subscription. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below, and we'll do some more math in the next video.